For a while, somebody might keep a nice looking outside. But if they're bad inside, it will come out. So, Saul disobeyed. And how who remembers that we talked about what he did to disobey? Does anybody remember what his punishment was for disobeying? Remember? You can do what you can do what God says, or you cannot do what God says, but you can't choose not to get God's punishment if you don't do what God says. Do you remember one of the punishments? Um his whatever he died before That's right. His family would no longer be kings. That was that happened because he made the sacrifice without waiting for the priest. Does anyone remember what Samuel told him? God was how God was going to punish him when he just plain did what he wanted. He disobeyed. He said he was saving the the animals for a sacrifice. Samuel said God wants obedience more than sacrifice says, obedience is way more important than sacrifices. Rebellion is like worshiping devils. And then Samuel said, remember what was his punishment for that? After his punishment, Saul grabbed Samuel's coat, his robe, and he tore it. He ripped it. And Samuel said, just like you ripped part of my coat away from it, God is going to tear the kingdom away from you. And he has found somebody to be a king that is a king after his own heart, after God's own heart. Now I want you to think, everybody think, what would a king be like that was a king after God's heart? What would a king be like that ruled Israel and ruled God's people like God would want them to? What would be some things that that king would do? Maddie? He would, um, obey. he would obey God. Aurora? He would what? He would, he would say he would protect the people of Israel. Would he be selfish? No. A king has lots of power, doesn't he? Everybody has to obey the king because he has an army and he has authority. So a king can be, he can do what he wants for himself or he can do what's good for the country. And a king that had God's heart in him would do what's good for the country, wouldn't he? Can we think of anything else? I don't have anything else in mind, but does anybody here have anything else in mind? If you think this king would be somebody with God's heart inside them, a king after God's own heart, what would they be like? Abby? Uh, they would what? Cleanse their heart from sin. They would cleanse their heart from sin. Would they be perfect? Can any man just never sin? No. But if they sinned, what would they do? They would what? I think I know what you mean. You said they would they would repent of their sin, wouldn't they? They would turn away from it and ask God to forgive them from it. So, God said, I'm going to find somebody who's a man after my own heart. And because Saul was supposed to be the king, Samuel went home and he was sad. He was sad for a long time. And after a while, God came to Samuel and he said, Samuel, you have cried, you have mourned long enough. I want you to go and anoint who I've chosen to be the next king of Israel. I've chosen a man after my own heart. So I, what I want you to do, I want you to go down to Bethlehem and take a young cow with you there, take a young calf for a sacrifice. You're going to offer a sacrifice and have a feast in Bethlehem and make sure you get Jesse's family. Does anybody know somebody called Jesse? Okay, if you know somebody named Jesse, maybe they were named after Jesse in the Bible. Jesse's, Jesse's family, get his sons to be there because one of his sons will be the next king of Israel. I'll let you know who it is. So, Samuel went down to Bethlehem, and when the people of Bethlehem saw that Samuel was coming to their house, they said, or their, their city, their town, they said, 
Are you angry? What are, what are you doing here? He says, no, I'm just going to have a feast. We're going to make a sacrifice. It's going to be a joyful time. We make, we, where is Jesse? I want to make sure that Jesse and his family are at our feast. And so they found Jesse, and Jesse brought his family to the feast. And Samuel said, all right, I need to see all the sons of Jesse. We're not going to have our feast. We're not going to make our sacrifice until I've seen all the sons of Jesse. And so Jesse brought his first son before Samuel, and his name was Eliab. Eliab. And Samuel looked at Eliab, and Eliab was tall, and he looked manly. He was strong. And Samuel thought, now I wonder, he would be a good king of Israel. And right then, God said, no, it's not Eliab. He said, I haven't chosen Eliab. I've chosen somebody else. And he said, I don't look at people like men look at people. I look on the inside. Okay? Right there. I, I'm changing the text. But God said, what? For the Lord seeth not as man seeth, for man looketh on the outward appearance, but God looketh on the heart. What could Samuel see about Eliab? Could he see his inside? Could he see his heart? No. All he could see was the outside, right? And Eliab might have been a good guy, and he was definitely looked like a king, but God said, no, I don't want him. So Jesse brought his second son. I think his name was Shammah. They had different names back then, didn't they? Shammah came before him, and Samuel looked at him, and the Lord said, no. Okay, it's not. Next one, then um, Abinadab. Abinadab came, I think that was his name. The third one came before him. And Samuel looked at him. Looks like a good guy. But the Lord spoke to Samuel and said, no, not him either. So then Jesse brought his fourth son before Samuel, and it wasn't him. And his fifth son before Samuel, and it wasn't him. And his sixth son before Samuel, and it wasn't him. And Samuel started to think, hmm, surely it's the seventh son. The seventh son came before Samuel, and God said, no, it's not Samuel. There were no more sons there. Samuel was kind of confused. He said, Jesse, do you have any more sons? Oh, he said, well, I have one more son. He's the youngest. He's out in the fields watching the sheep. Samuel said, go get him. We're not going to sit down. We're not going to make our sacrifice. We're not going to have our feast until I've seen all of your sons. And so they ran and they got David from the field. And David came and stood before Samuel. And God said, he's the one. And so, David was the one that God said was a man after his own heart. Hmm. If David was a man after God's own heart, what does that tell us that God knew about David? He knows he's a good person inside. He knows he's a good person inside. Now, I have a list of things here. David was a man after God's own heart. It's, I don't know. It's, we're just going to put it here. So God knew that David believed in God. You know, the Bible says that a fool says in his heart, there's no God. Do you know people that say that there's no God? Have you heard of people that say there's no God? What do we call those people? Do we know what they're called if they say that they, they don't believe that there's a God? There's a certain name for them. Ian? Non they're a non-believer. There's another name for them. I don't think you would know, Aurora. What? They're sinners. We're all sinners, though. Have you ever heard the, the word, the term atheist? Somebody's an atheist. Okay, if somebody's an atheist, they say there's no God. But what does the Bible say somebody that says there's no God is? I just said it. A fool. A fool. 
A lot of atheists, a lot of people that say there's no God, they think that they're really smart. They say, I believe science. I don't believe in God. Science doesn't prove that there's a God, and so I don't believe in God. But the Bible says that people that don't believe there's a God, they are a fool. But God didn't think David was a fool, did he? So he knew that he knew that inside David's heart, he believed in God. He believed that God is the creator. A lot of times people don't believe in God because they don't believe that God could create anything. People have actually said that everything that we have around us came because of an explosion. Have you ever heard of that? There was a big bang. And all of a sudden, the earth came into existence. And in that earth, there was a pool of chemicals and lightning struck. Right? And out of the lightning came a one-celled organism. And that thing split and turned into two cells, and they got together and became three cells, right? And pretty soon we had human beings. Not pretty soon. That's foolish, isn't it? That's foolish. That's denying that there's a God. So David believed in the creation. He knew that God knows everything. Wow. God knows everything. We say that, don't we? God, when, right before we pray, we talk about that, don't we? God knows everything that we do. God knows everything that we say. God knows everything that we think. God knows everything that we would do. God knows everything. And so David knew that. And in fact, he wrote some psalms that tell us that he knew that. And then he believed that God is everywhere. The Bible teaches us that God is everywhere. That means God is here. Sometimes people, sometimes we are thinking, hmm, I want to do this certain thing, and we look around to see if somebody's there, and if somebody was there, maybe we wouldn't do it, right? But if the coast is clear, then we're going to go do it. Have you ever been that way? Thought, no, I don't know if I want to do this, and we look, oh, I can do it. Or we, we know that nobody's home and so we do something. You know who is there all the time? God is there. God is everywhere. And David knew that. David wrote that you could not run from God. You could go all the way as far north as you could go or as far south as you could go or as far east as you could go or as far west as you could go. You could hide in the dark. And he said he knew that even the dark was like the brightest sunlight to God. We can't get away from God. God is everywhere. And then, God knew that David was repentant. Remember, Abby, you, we said that a, that a man after God's own heart, if he sinned, he would turn back to God, wouldn't he? We all sin, but God knew that David, if he sinned, he would turn back to God and ask for his forgiveness. Now, does God forgive us when we sin? When we come back to him and ask for his forgiveness, doesn't he? He does. And so God knew that David was that. God knew that David trusted him. Sometimes, let me make sure I've got the right. Yes. Sometimes we don't know what's going to happen. And we get scared, don't we? David, when he was afraid, he trusted God. In fact, he said in the book of Psalms, one of the places that he wrote things down for us in the Bible, he says, when I am afraid, what time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. How many of you have ever been afraid? Different things that could make us afraid. Sometimes we're just afraid of the dark. Yeah? Sometimes we're afraid that something's going to happen to us. And maybe that thing does happen to us. But one thing that if we believe God, we know that if we're afraid, we can trust God. Because God will always, will only let things happen to us that are good for us. Even if he's punishing us, he knows that's good for us, right? Because we need to stop doing what's wrong. So, God knew that inside David, David in his heart trusted God. He knew that David was thankful. That's something that happens in our heart, isn't it? We 
have so many things to be thankful for, whether they're big things that happen all in our lives or little things that happen from time to time. When we get a snack from Bible Club, that's a gift, isn't it? It happens every week, doesn't it? But it still is a gift. We should be thankful for that. When we get a ride to Bible Club, we should be thankful for that. When we get to read the Bible, God tells us, wrote down what he wants us to know. We should be thankful for that, shouldn't we? And David was thankful. A person that's not thankful in their heart, they might look like a nice person, but inside, they're not, because they're not thankful. And the last thing we're going to say about David today is that he was dependent. That means that he, he depended on God for what he needed. He knew that he needed to depend on God. There was once when he was, he was, remember, where was he when, when they found him? When Samuel was, he was out with the sheep. On another time, he was out with the sheep and a lion came to steal a sheep. And he trusted, he depended on God. And God gave him the strength to kill the lion and protect the sheep. Another time, a bear came. And when the bear came, oh, this is the lion, but he trusted God, he depended on God, and God gave him the strength to kill the bear and the lion and protect his sheep. David depended on God. Who did Saul depend on? On himself. On strong. He's strong. But David depended on God. Where's the, where, how can we see? We can't see what somebody depends on, can we? It's inside somebody, isn't it? It's inside you. I can't tell if you depend on yourself or if you depend on God. I can't tell. Now, when we say thank you, that helps us see that. But I can't tell if inside your heart you are thankful or not thankful. I can't tell if you trust God or if you trust yourself. I can't tell if when you sin, you repent to God or if you don't. I can't tell if you believe in God. That happens inside you. But who can tell all of that? God can. Because God looks on the heart. Now, God told Samuel that David, standing in front of him, was the man after his own heart that he wanted to be the next king of Israel. And so Samuel took his um, bottle of anointing oil and anointed David to be the next king of Israel. God wanted somebody that would be godly to be his king. Yeah. So, listen. But was David the king? He was anointed king, but who's the king? Saul. Well, but Saul is still the king on the earth right now. You think Saul wants David to just, you think Saul's just going to go home and say, okay, David, you can be the king. No, because Saul is a wicked man. He's evil inside. He is, but we're going to have to see what he will do. And a very strange thing happens to David. We're going to find out next week what happens to David, where David gets sent after he's anointed to be king while Saul is still king. But I want us to think, okay? In fact, I'm going to, I was reminded of something this week, and I want you guys to do this. Very just, we're not going to do anything spooky or anything, but I want you to close your eyes and bow your head. I want you to just think with yourself. Okay? Don't look around. Just think with yourself. In your heart, are you somebody that believes in God? Are you thankful? Are you repentant? When you do things wrong, do you pray and ask Jesus to forgive you for those things? Do you trust God? God wants us to be people that are right and godly inside. He does care that our inside comes out and is on our outside, but it's most important that inside we are God.